Okay, so today's workshop, uh, we're going to, or you're going to set up and use your own server. Okay, build your own server, not bring your own. You didn't have to bring one. I've provided you a server. You're going to build it. Well, build it. Uh, build it in terms of really just set up some initial configuration and install some software and use it. So let's say before we do that, let's explain what we mean by a server and a few other things. We're going to, we're going to use what's called a virtual private server. So what's a virtual private server? Well first, what is a server? Who has a server of their own? What is it? What's a server? Well, to, we often interpret a server as being in two different ways. Sometimes we think of it as hardware. You go, uh, for your company, you go buy a server to host a website. You go buy a server to do some specific task. So that's the hardware. Well, what is it? It's a computer where the main purpose of that computer is to run server software. So we also think of servers as software. The software running on that hardware. So I go buy a server, the hardware, and on that server hardware I install some server software. Okay, so it's a little bit confusing there. Server software, well, in a simple term, applications that respond or communicate with other applications across the internet, at least from our perspective. So your web browser communicates with, for example, the Apache web server, just a piece of software that runs on a computer, a web server. You may have a, the Microsoft Exchange email server running in your company, and all your users have clients that get their email from that server. So server from the software perspective. So a server some of you may have heard about web hosting or shared hosting. You want to create your own website. Well, what do you need? You need a computer, the server hardware, and the server software. Apache Web Server is one common web server software. So if you want to have your own website, you either need a computer with internet access and install the server, but many people don't have their own dedicated computer uh, that can have full-time internet access. So many people go via a company which provides a service of web hosting. You go pay a company two dollars a month and they'll provide you some space to host your website. And web hosting normally is one computer shared amongst multiple users. What that company does, they have a computer or many computers and many users get accounts on one of those computers. So it's called shared hosting in some cases. These computers in front of you, many users can use the one computer to host a website. So the resources of that computer are shared amongst multiple computers. Uh, the resources of the computer are shared against multiple users. Okay. There's usually one computer which has one operating system running, one web server, like the Apache web server software, but many websites hosted on that computer. That's shared web hosting. We're not going to do that. We can, but we're not going to today. What we're going to do is set up and use a virtual private server. So the idea is that we have our own server hardware, our own, it's private, it's only us using that, but rather than having an actual own computer, it's virtual, in that we use virtual machines to implement that. That is, the idea is that each of you will have your own server, server hardware, but virtual hardware, not real hardware. That's the idea. Of course, that virtual hardware is running on real hardware, and the resources are shared amongst different virtual machines. So that's the concept, that we want to give everyone here a server, hardware server, and to make it cheaper, we use a virtual hardware server, virtual private server, and today we'll give you access to that and then we'll go through some steps to install and set up some software on that hardware server. Okay, so really we're going to focus on how to set up the server software. 
We'll go through this quick so we can get started. So generally we talk about virtual private servers and providers of such a service. So companies sell you VPSs. Uh, there are many different companies across the world. When you choose such a VPS provider, there are a number of things that you may consider. Right? You need to pay money usually to use it. You're using someone else's hardware and they're providing you a service, you pay uh, some money to use that. So how much money is one thing to consider when choosing a particular provider? Uh, how much money do you pay per month, which is a common thing, but nowadays you can pay on a shorter time frame, per hour. That is, the ones that we're going to use, we can pay per hour. So if we only use it for one day, we only pay for that one day, not for the full month. Okay? Which is a little bit more efficient, money-wise. How much does a VPS cost? Anyone? About? The ones we're going to use are five dollars per month. Okay, one hundred and sixty baht per month. There are maybe there are cheaper ones around. Not many, but there are a few. There may be even a few free ones, and there are many more expensive ones around. Okay. We'll see why. When you choose a provider, a company that you use your VPS, you consider your cost. The vi virtual server is hosted in, on real hardware in usually what's called a data center, some hosting, some actual location. The location of that, the city where it is, the country where it is, may have an impact on the performance of your server. Okay, so you want to consider the location. Many companies have servers in multiple locations. The server is being accessed via the internet and by you and by others, so you want to consider how fast is the network access into that data center. How many megabits per second coming in and out? The more the better. When you choose a VPS, you want to consider what virtualized hardware they offer. How many virtual CPUs, how much RAM, how much disk space do they offer normal traditional hard disks hard disks, spinning platters, or solid state disks, which are much faster. How much do they allow you in terms of network bandwidth? You want to consider what operating systems that they provide to you. Most will support Linux or BSD based operating systems, free ones. Some will also support Windows, but you usually have to pay a little bit extra because there's a license cost involved of using Windows and other operating systems. Some will come with, you just get the operating system installed. They just install it for you. Others will install applications or pre-built images. For example, they'll install the operating system plus the web server plus uh, WordPress. So you've got an instant website running WordPress. So they'll provide you that service. And the other things to consider uh, support, like uh, uh, how they respond to your, your queries and problems, reliability of the, the data center, uh, uptime and so on. How many other people are using those resources? How much contention? And other things. Today is not about convincing you to use a virtual private server. It's not about selling one. Okay? We're going to use one just to give you some experience and then it's up to you to, to choose whether it's of use to you. Okay? That's not my point. I'm not trying to convince you that you all need one. We're going to use VPSs provided by a company called DigitalOcean. Okay. Why? They're quite a popular, well-known company worldwide, uh, provide uh, competitive price uh, for what we want to do. Um, so they seem okay. I haven't used them before this workshop, so I set up an account to use them. I've used in, in the past, or I still use Linode, another one that provides Linux VPSs. So let's go to DigitalOcean. Well, so DigitalOcean, I've created an account for myself. To make it simpler, I create an account for myself, and then I'm going to set up some servers that each of you have, okay, that can access. Let's look at so I've logged into my account and 
This is from the Digital Ocean website. You don't have to be able to read it all. I'll zoom in where necessary. Digital Ocean, it's about water, calls their VPSs droplets. Okay? So the idea is I have an account. If I want to create a VPS, I can do so by clicking the Create button and choose some options and it creates a VPS for me and I can create multiple VPSs. Of course I pay extra for each one. Okay, so I've already created a, num a number of VPSs or droplets as called here for each of you. Okay, so they're listed here. Uh, I think everyone's got one. I'm going to create one for myself right now. So I'll create a droplet. And you'll see the options that I have when I create it. So I, I enter a host name, which would be the name of my droplet. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, preferably, we wouldn't name it after my name, because it's a little bit confusing once we log in. But for simplicity in this class, I've named it after our names. And then I select the size which is the size of the virtual hardware that they provide me. So the first option is I get one CPU, 512 megabytes of RAM, a 20 gigabyte SSD, solid state drive, and one terabyte of transfer, which is the amount of data that comes into my, uh, my server over a period of one month. And I never remember in this case whether it's both in and out, or it's just one way, but one terabyte of network bandwidth over a month. If I transfer more than one terabyte, then I'll need to pay. This costs $5 a month. If you want more RAM, larger disk space, more transfer, then you move up to $10, $20, thousands of dollars per month towards the bottom. Okay? So you can choose based on what you think your requirements are. I'm going to choose the cheapest one. It will be sufficient for our purposes. And that's what I've done for you. This company has data centers in different cities. I'm going to choose one nearby. So it's maybe a little bit faster for accessing across the internet. I'm going to choose Singapore. And that's what I've done for all of yours as well. I can select an operating system to install. Linux-based operating systems, Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, and others, and the version where it just installs the base OS. But I can also select from applications, which installs an operating system plus some applications on top of that for me. So I don't have to install those applications. Uh, WordPress on Ubuntu. Okay, So it installs Ubuntu plus the web server plus WordPress. So you've got an instant website. Because we're going to set up a website, a basic one, we're going to use what's called LAMP on Ubuntu. What's LAMP mean? Anyone? LAMP? Not the LAMP in the projector. What's LAMP stand for? M for MySQL, start at L. What's L stand for? What operating system kernel are we using? Linux. A for Apache web server which is a common web server, M for MySQL database server, and P for PHP, and maybe some others. That's a common combination, Apache web server, MySQL as a database server, and PHP to join them, running on a Linux operating system, LAMP. There's a few options down the bottom, not so important for us today. Vert IO, default enabled, really just speeds up the interface between, I think, my virtual machine and the, the real hardware that's running. Private networking allows me to easily connect all of the, my droplets, all of my VPSs together in sort of an internal network. We won't use it, I think. IPv6 is the new version of IP. If you enable backups, I think you pay more. Okay, so we'll not do that. And I'll create the droplet. And now on the real hardware, they're installing a virtual machine. It takes about a minute to install. Okay. Uh, 
and as it installs, it actually sends me an email saying, here's the login details for your account, for your new VPS. Uh, okay. And while it's going, it's already sent me an email. Sorry about that. Uh, and you should see, look at your email now. It sent me an email, or DigitalOcean sent me an email saying, your new droplet has been created, your new VPS has been created. It has this IP address. The username to log in is root, and the password is this random set of characters. Look at your email now because we'll need that information to log into your VPS. And mine is created, there's some other information I can do with it, but let's go direct to using your VPS. Our tasks today. So I've created fresh droplets for everyone. Who did that? Maybe just check that that's plugged in down there. I think I found who did that. Okay, good. Just be careful, the, the cables are a bit loose. Today, you have a fresh droplet. Together, we'll set it up. So you'll do it on your own, I'll do it on my own but you'll follow what we do, uh, set it up, add a user, set up the web server, the database server, and install some of the software that we've seen in other workshops. Some privacy software, and maybe when we get time at the end, just do some different things with it, test and play. Any questions before we start? <laughs> 